Here we're going to look at dual voltage transformers. So what is a dual voltage transformer? It basically means on the primary, I have an option of putting in two different voltages. I can either come in with a higher voltage or a lower voltage and wire it accordingly. And on the secondary, I can have two options, a lower voltage option or a higher voltage option. And I wire them essentially either in series or in parallel. This isn't exactly what they look like, but this helps us. And then I'm going to draw a different drawing of what it might actually look like, what the connection points would look like. What do I have over here though? This is something to something we've already done. That's going to help me understand this process. If I have batteries, just little 1.5 volt batteries, little double A's or C batteries, one and a half volts each. If I put two of them together in series, how many volts am I gonna have going out? Well, we know that in series, voltage is additive. So I get one and a half volts and I get an extra one and a half volt push. So I have a total of three volts. Now, if I had put the batteries in parallel with each other, I'm gonna get one and a half volts off of the first battery. Second battery won't add voltage. Remember, parallel, the voltage stays the same, but it's gonna add the extra amps. So I'm gonna end up with 1.5 volts total going down these lines. Why do I put that? Just to give us a picture in our mind of what's going on in the secondary of the transformer. Because when I think of a transformer, I often think of the primary being like a load. And that's on, on the distribution system. And that's what this actually looks like. It looks like circuits that you've seen. So when I have a circuit, that has an inductor that's gonna have a voltage drop of 240 and another inductor with a voltage drop of 240, how many volts do I need to have at the source of that circuit? That's correct, 480 volts. I need 480 volts coming in. I will drop 240 volts here. I will drop another 240 here. But if I configure them in parallel, how many volts do I need at the source here to drop 240 volts on this branch and 240 volts here? I only need 240. So this allows me to use this same transformer, whether I have a 480 volt source or a 240 volt source. We can either connect it in series for the higher voltage or parallel or the lower voltage of the two options. Let's look on the secondary. What's going on here? Whichever way I configure this, these windings on the primary side are inducing a voltage in the secondary. And that's where I have the batteries. They're a source for the new system. Yes, it's been provided by the power in the primary. It's induced the voltage here, but now this voltage goes out to the new system. So what do I have? I have 120 volts and I build another 120 volts. And how many volt potential do I have between these two wires? That's right. I build my voltage as the turns go up and I keep building voltage till I don't have turns left. So 240 volts. And if I were to put them in parallel, it would be very similar to the batteries. My voltage would stay the same. So this is a picture that we've seen in our circuits. I'm gonna do a little switch here as to what it might look like, two versions of what it might look like on an actual dual voltage transformer. So here's what they might look like. It's another schematic for dual voltage windings. 
they're ready for me to arrange, to wire, to configure however I want to do it for the higher or lower voltage option. This is one transformer, this is another. We're just looking at the voltage systems, not the amps here. And as you can see, I have two 240 volt windings on the primary and two 120 volt windings on the secondary on either side. There's just a little difference in the terminations. What we normally do is we call the high voltage side by H's, H1, H2, H3, H4. And over here, two and three are switched because I've taken the right side of the first primary winding and made the termination point over here. And the left side of the second primary winding with its termination to the left. So H1, H2, which is the right side of the first winding goes over here. H3 is over here because we've changed the termination. And then H4 at the end. And then the X's tend to go in the opposite direction. And that has to do with really going all the way back to Lenz's law, an induced voltage uh, excuse me, a, an applied voltage will induce a voltage going the opposite direction. So obviously it makes a difference in whether the, wind, uh, the windings are made clockwise or counterclockwise, but if the voltage is going that way, all things being equal, the induced voltage will flow the other direction. So it's because of that that we go X1, this is X2 here, but it jumps over to this side, then X3, X4 or more simply seen here, X1, X2, X3, X4. So I'll do the transformer on the left first, and then we'll see how that looks on the right and why they cross those over, why? So what we normally do on these is we connect the outer windings first, the H1 and H4, the outer leads, if you will. And here I recognize I've got a 480 volt source. These two wires at the top have 480 volt potential between them. What that means is I have 480 volts to drop here. If I put 480 volts across this winding, I'm gonna burn it up. So how do I have to distribute 480 volts across both of these? In series. So let's follow the voltage comes in here, I have a 480 volt potential, comes in the first wire, drops down, drops 240 volts, drops the other 240, and then returns. Okay. On the secondary, I'm looking for 120 volts on the lines. How I'm going to connect that? Well, let's think about that. If I connected it in series, it's obviously a two to one ratio. It would have induced 120 volts here and 120 volts here. If I put them in series, I'd build 120 volts and then build another 120 volts and, and end up with 240. So I could end up with 240 on these lines, but I'm trying to get 120. I know there's a 120 volt potential here. So I could bring this down and I have fed these two lines with 120 volts. Goes out to the load, comes back, goes here, complete circuit. Out to the load and back. But I only have half the power, so I need to connect the other side as well. And there I have both of them connected. Now, that's a perfectly fine way to do it. But how about this? Do I still have the right side of each winding going to the top line? Yes. How about the left side of each winding going here? Yes, I do. I put in these jumpers. So my X1 and X4 go to the lines and I've connected them in parallel. 
because as they create a voltage, what comes from this line gets separated, goes through both windings together, and goes to the other line. Okay. Now, as you can tell, here I have a jumper that's that wide. And here I have a jumper that's twice as wide. I'd have to ship these things with little jumpers and big jumpers. So what they do, some smart guy come up with the idea, hey, if we cross the wiring in the factory, let's see what happens. So 480 volts on the primary. Line one comes down to H1. Line two comes to H4. No current flows are not yet connected. No connection point here. But I put them in series. So let's follow the path. Down the wire, through this winding, drop 240 volts. Through this winding, drop the other 240, and up we go. I connect the outside wires, and I put a jumper across the middle too. But here I've got to make this parallel. Connect my outside wires to the lines. It's not connected through in the middle yet. If I put it in series, I'd hit these lines with 240 volts, twice what I want. So I've got to put them in parallel. Remember like my AA batteries in parallel so that I keep the voltage lower, parallel for the lower option? That means I've got to have the right side of this winding connected to the right side of this winding. Looks like I put a jumper in there. And the left side of the windings together. So as the voltage is induced in the primary, goes out to the load, comes back, complete circuit. the other way to do it parallel. If you notice, remember what I said about jumpers? Here I'd need a wide jumper, wide jumper, and a little jumper. But up here, same size jumper, whether I'm going series or whether I'm going parallel. That's why they crossed the leads here and why it'll read H1, H3, H2, H4 x1, x3, x2, x4. Still the first winding is x1, x2, and the second winding is x3, x4. They just cross the leads. So try not to get too confused with that, just follow your current path. In the parallel, the right side of each winding goes to one line, and the left side goes to the other line. Same here, the right side goes to one line. The left side goes to the other line. Series, however, is pretty easy. The outside leads go up to the line and the middle two just connect. Same here. So what I always tell folks is if it looks like series, it's probably series. If it don't looks like series, it's probably parallel. My higher voltage option will be series because I have the choice of 240 or 480. If I put these in parallel, mirror image of this, I could have a 240 volt source. Or if I put these in series on the secondary, I could end up with 240 volts. I'm gonna put a couple more transformers up here and we're gonna see how we can get 120, 240, or even a combination of 120 and 240 out of the secondary. See dual voltage part two video for further configurations.